guys and gals. Xavier here for Hum of the Earth. Signing in from San Cristobal, specifically the little hike that's situated behind the orchid gardens uh, that I'll be doing a separate video of. But in this video, I will be talking about uh, is it safe to travel in Mexico? Um, I've been traveling by bicycle, so kind of sticking out like a uh, sore thumb uh, for the last uh, four months, actually four months and like a week now. And I've gone through 13 different Mexican states. So the majority of them, uh, some of them that uh, would be considered dangerous, uh, like Nuevo Leon, uh, Coahuila, uh, Durango, Sinaloa, Michoacan, etc. Um, yeah, and I've been in all different types of environments, so uh, cities, uh, wilderness. Uh, there's a little snake there, but he's gone. Uh, so small towns, big cities, tourist areas, pretty much everything. So, I have a decent uh, amount of experience uh, with Mexico. And so I'm going to start with a, uh, a little story. Uh, so I'd done some research on safety and, and stuff like that. And um, when I was approaching the border, so in uh, Laredo, Texas, I was asking people, you know, uh, do you have any safety advice or, or things like that? And everyone basically just said, turn around, don't do this. You're gonna die. Maybe you'll survive, but you're probably gonna get killed. Uh, and sure enough, on my first day in Mexico, uh, my bicycle breaks down. Uh, so I had to walk all the way back through Nuevo Laredo, uh, which is supposed to be uh, a dangerous, town because it's a border town and uh, that's typically where you have drug violence and stuff like that uh, and I walked back with my broken bicycle all through town and all I could see was moms bringing their daughters to school people joking laughing around uh, and uh, yeah and four months later uh, I've never really been scared in Mexico uh, people are super nice I uh, haven't had really any uh, scares. There's only once where I may have been pickpocketed, but I might have also just kind of, my wallet may have just fallen out of my pocket as well. So I'm not sure about that one. But with that being said, uh, Mexico isn't 100% safe. Uh, most places aren't. Uh, so there are some tips that I could maybe provide to reduce the chances of something uh, something bad happening to you. So, first thing that you want to remember when you're traveling in any developing country is that most people don't have a lot. Uh, so, even though people don't want to rob, uh, if you're going where, in somewhere where people don't have a lot of money and you're flashing a lot of money and making it seem like, you know, you just kind of have gobs and gobs of it and it's never going to run out, uh, then you're maybe making yourself a, a target for, for robbery. Uh, so flashing big uh, amounts of money, jewelry, really expensive clothes, things like that, uh, not the greatest idea. So another kind of common uh, concept when it comes to avoiding uh, being robbed is uh, well one keeping your eyes open and just not being out needlessly you know late in the night wandering around alone in areas that uh, aren't very crowded and dark not well lit uh, because uh, crime is usually committed in, in the veil of darkness ideally for you know criminals they don't want you know a lot of witnesses a lot of people seeing or trying that could or people that could potentially intervene and prevent the robbery or call the police or something so yeah so if you can 
uh, you know, get up early, uh, see what you have to see during the day, and uh, relax at night. I'm not saying you have to do this, I'm just saying if you want to really reduce uh, as much as possible the, the chances of uh, um, getting robbed or something like that, uh, that's something you can do. And if you do want to go out, uh, if you can find yourself a group, uh, that's a lot safer. So the next tip also kind of re relates to uh, darkness. Um, this is for people that are have a car or a bicycle like me. I'm bicycling through Mexico. Uh, avoid riding at night for a few reasons. Uh, one, the conditions of the roads, unless you're on a toll road, uh, can vary pretty drastically. So really big potholes or just kind of rough conditions. So if you're riding at night, uh, you might not notice that things are changing and hit a really big pothole, but even more likely is hitting a speed bump. Uh, Mexico is really littered with speed bumps and they often don't have signage uh, letting you know that a speed bump is incoming. So, and uh, another reason uh, why you wouldn't want to be riding at night is because uh, in Mexico there's a lot of livestock. Uh, they go from one field to another so they could just be in the middle of the road. That happens. I've seen that quite a, uh, quite a lot here in Mexico. So another reason to not be uh, driving at night. Next tip relates to uh, pickpockets. So this is the kind of most common uh, way that uh, you would be robbed. So basically this is like, you know, someone just, uh, when you're turned around, uh, maybe someone's causing a distraction, someone's talking to you, and then someone pulls up behind you and takes the wallet out of your uh, pocket or your backpack or, or something like that. Uh, and the most common places where this can happen would be like if you're in a city and you went to a uh, the main square or something and there's a lot of tourists uh, kind of walking around or uh, public transportation or a busy market somewhere where there's kind of a lot going on uh, where you know you could feel maybe something so, someone touch you but you would think it's normal just because of uh, kind of the traffic in the area so just keep that in mind that when you're going to those areas uh, to maybe um, make sure that uh, your wallet or whatever is in a secure place where it can't be easily uh, pickpocketed. And another thing relating to your wallet or your purse uh, is to not keep all of your IDs, your debit and credit card all in one wallet. That way if it gets robbed, um, then you're gonna be in a bad spot. You're gonna be without money, without identification. So, you know, getting to uh, renew all those things and especially if you lose your, your passport, uh, would be a lot harder at that point so and another good tip relating to that is to email all of your ids uh, to yourself uh, photocopies you know if you want to be extra safe call the email something that has nothing to do with what you're actually sending so that if that does happen everything gets robbed then you know you can still access a computer somewhere or something and uh print out your ids to uh uh, get your passport back So the final tip is not only a tip uh, relating to safety, but also just to enrich your experience uh, Traveling in Mexico is to speak Spanish uh, Unless you're in the most touristy areas uh, most people will not speak very much English uh, so why not talk to you the Mexican people, they're great, they're fun, they're easy going. Uh, so definitely try to brush up on your Spanish. And why this relates to safety is that if you don't speak any Spanish, you just kind of stick out even more as uh, you know a tourist. And if someone is you know looking to potentially rob tourists, then you're just you know sticking out even more. So just in general, if you can it's best to try to uh, just blend in uh, as much as possible. All right, so those are my tips. I just wanna cover a few topics that 
uh, people might be wondering about if they're planning on traveling or thinking of traveling to Mexico. First one would be the Belize. Uh, why I bring this up is that unfortunately uh, talking to people that have traveled quite a bit in Mexico uh, when it, the topic goes to you know robbery and stuff like that uh, what I've heard kind of by far the most uh, in terms of a source of robbery is actually uh, the police uh, this is because Mexican police like most people in Mexico don't make a lot of money so they're trying to get you know another source of income by kind of uh, you know uh, obtaining bribes from people uh, often tourists so what would happen is uh, let's say if you rented a car or something you get stopped for a traffic violation uh, the officer I'm not and again I'm not saying this is the norm this is you know the exception but still the most common in terms of robbery which isn't common <laughs> uh, so yeah so what would happen is the officer might uh, might write you a ticket but he might also offer that uh, you can kind of pay for the ticket right then and there and, and or go to the station so at that point he may be asking for uh, a bribe whether you know it or not uh, so some people's thoughts on this is that you know they, they don't want to encourage corruption uh, which is understandable but what also needs to be considered is that the uh, Mexican judicial system uh, is currently still uh, in a uh, a Napoleonic system which means that you're guilty until proven innocent uh, so this maybe more relates to things more serious than a traffic incident but something to keep in mind uh, if you're in this situation uh, and you need to decide whether uh, you want to pay a bribe or you want to go through the actual uh, judicial uh, process uh, so there are some ways that, that you may even be able to kind of skip both options uh, I've heard of people you know pretending like they didn't speak any Spanish and the officers just kind of getting frustrated and eventually letting them go <laughs> but uh, I can't say that that would always work <laughs> so yeah so that's the police and the final topic is the infamous Mexican cartels so this is like I feel one of the main reasons at least in Canada and the US why people don't really travel to uh, real authentic Mexican uh, locations like when they go to Mexico they just stay on the resort and they don't go out because of the things that they've seen uh, on the news or, or read or heard about uh, so that's uh, drug violence but what you have to keep in mind about drug violence which accounts for a very large kind of percentage of uh, the Mexican crime statistics is that it's it's drug specific so it's cartels uh, fighting with other cartels for uh, you know territory or whatever or fighting against uh, the local authorities so like the police so uh, you know the cartels they they have uh, their own kind of uh, for lack of a better term you know industry or business going and it doesn't really involve uh, robbing tourists so the cartels you know they have other things to do they're not really preoccupied with tourists uh, unless you're you know a, a billionaire or something and uh, you're flashing your your wealth or uh, making it known of your location or something then I don't really think that you have anything to worry about yeah so I think that pretty much uh, covers everything that I want to touch on in terms of uh, Mexican safety so again Mexico is pretty safe uh, people are very nice but you could be robbed anywhere in the world so you still have to be careful 
and uh, yeah so even though I may know a little bit more than the average uh, Canadian or American when it, uh, it comes to uh, uh, Mexico uh, given that I've gone through uh, the country or most of it uh, I'm definitely not an expert so there's some things that uh, you feel are important that I missed uh, or if you have any questions uh, you can write a comment uh, below the video and I will most likely answer or get back to you or uh, or just like your comment if it's additional information and uh, yeah so if you're interested in seeing uh, everywhere I went in Mexico because uh, Mexico is an awesome country so I definitely recommend that you uh, uh, kind of check out your options uh, you can go to my website so that's follow the hum of the uh, and on my homepage I have a map of all the different spots that I've been if you click on the pins there'll also be a uh, blog post with videos uh, just kind of showing what I saw in that area so I hope you enjoyed this video uh, maybe you learn something and maybe I convince somebody that uh, Mexico is a great place to visit because it definitely is and, uh, and if you'd like to uh, follow my continuing adventures I'm currently on, a, currently on my first bicycle tour from Canada to Argentina uh, you can follow my adventures by subscribing to my channel so hope you enjoyed have a good one